Hello and welcome back to Always Obsolete. Today I'm going to demonstrate my latest build, which represents a sort of combination of creature comforts and learnings put into practice from the last year or so with building retro PCs from this era. Or alternatively, this would be a build that Phil from Phil's Computer Lab would be proud of since a lot of the inspiration from what went into this computer came from his videos. Now, at the heart of this build is a Pentium MMX, and if you've seen any of my previous videos, this case might look familiar, but I assure you this is a completely new system. I'm just reusing the case. I had the previous motherboard um, right here, but uh, as you can see, it just has a regular Pentium non-MMX. Having a MMX Pentium is crucial because it will allow for me to use the Setmol DOS utility. This trick has been known for several years now, popularized by Phil's Computer Lab and originally championed by members of the Vogons forums. With Setmol, I can slow the MMX to varying degrees targeting specific DOS benchmark speed scores at will, thus creating a machine that is like a 386, 486, and Pentium 1 all in one. I don't want to get too far into the weeds with the technical side of Setmol. For a deeper dive into this method, please check out Phil's Computer Lab channel. I am going to be using some of Phil's batch files, which will help me target specific system speeds to compare against his speed guide. So enough about Setmol. We can play around with that utility a little bit later. Just a brief overview of what's in this computer. So it is an AT uh, motherboard which means AT keyboard. I don't have one of those. However, they still sell these converters on Amazon. I don't know who's buying them besides guys like me, but they are available and it's a quick ship. Uh, likewise with the mouse, no PS2 mouse. Uh, there is a serial connection. I don't mind using serial mice, so no problem for me. Down to my video cards, and you're probably not surprised. You know, I love Voodoo's on this channel, so I have a Voodoo 2 here uh, as my 3D accelerator. Of course, that can only do 3D, so I have uh, something I, I've never tried before. It's, it's a Trident PCI um, for my 2D. This is one of the creature comforts here, and you can see I have a USB thumb drive in here, but this is just a simple USB uh, PCI card. Now, in order to enable um, your thumb drive as, as a removable disk, you have to install drivers. It doesn't come natively with Windows 98. Um, as far as I know, this only works on Windows 98 and above. So if you... Uh, want to use Windows 95, I, I believe you'd be out of luck. I'm not too sure about that. And down here at the bottom is a Sound Blaster AWE32. And this is a cool card that I've wanted to try for a while now. I'm glad I picked one up. And um, if you know your sound cards, uh, the AWE um, allows you to load custom sound fonts into the um, RAM. Now, I only have 32 megs of RAM installed, so I'm kind of, even though that would have been large for the time, a lot of the custom ones uh, I'm finding online now are, are too big to, to fit in, but I can still get a lot of good ones, and I think I found the perfect one for the games I play. Uh, now I see there's crazy thing, modern things you can do like the, like the McCake and I'll probably eventually start playing around with that for my next build but for right now the AWB32 will have to do so yeah nothing super crazy about this build uh, 2 gig hard drive um, 24 gig, uh, megs of RAM there's that tiny little Trident uh, video card there I'll get the model number and I'll put it in the uh, description for the video the Voodoo 2, of course. There's that little USB card. I mean, that's what I use to transfer all my large files over, right? I don't want to have to burn anything to a disk or um, network this thing, that sort of thing. And uh, way down at the bottom, you know, you can see that 
massive AWE ISA sound card with my RAM installed there. Now testing what the upper limit of what this machine could handle would be. I'm running pod here from 97. This is the MMX version running in 3DFX mode. And I'm using the 800 by 600 resolution. Um, I guess you could call it a hack. Now, could this machine handle a game, you know, more complex, modern than this? Maybe. Um, but I think this is a pretty good example of, you know, where the upper limit of how good a game could look um, and run on this PC. So I think it looks great and it's, it's running pretty well. Now let's get into um, some more fun stuff with Setmall. Okay, I'm now gonna run the Setmall utility using Phil's uh, pre-configured batch files. Uh, instead of manually going through and tweaking each uh, setting, I can just kind of use these files to target certain thresholds. So I'm going to try the fastest and run the 3D bench to see what I get. So I got 86, which is actually low for this machine. Now, I think it might have to do with that Trident one megabyte PCI card. Obviously this isn't harnessing that Voodoo 2. Now, previously I did try this using this S3 Verge card and I was getting scores in the mid 100s I believe, which is where it should be. But this is actually a good thing because I want to go as slow as possible. So let's see how slow I can I can get this machine to run. Um, so if I favorite batch is slowest and 3D bench, was it 3D benchmark two? 3D bench two. So at the slowest, I'm getting 21.1, which isn't quite good enough. That's around a 486.25. I want to get to like 386 levels. Now, this will be possible if I go into the BIOS and disable the external cache. Let's try that and see what happens. So I'm in my BIOS here. I'm just going to disable external cache. Save and exit, yes. So I'm now gonna run the slowest setting again. And let's see what our newest score is. So it took a while to finish running that one and we got an 11.6, which is awesome because that is insanely slow. That is around a 386.25, so really slow let's see what happens if i try to oh man why let me exit out of here let's see what happens if we try to play test drive three is rotating nice and slowly. And yeah, it's, I mean, playable, I think. Jesus.
The next sweet spot I'd want to target would be uh, somewhere like a 46, uh, 66, right? So I'm going to try medium and see what kind of score we get. Medium got me a 17, which is still really slow. Uh, it's it's like 386 area still. So let's try to uh, speed it up again. Using the fast setting, I got 70.4, which would be a really, really fast 486. There's one more setting I can try, which is uh, medium high. So let's see what that brings us. This gets us 20.7, so still kind of slow. What I would have to do is re-enable the external cache and then play around with these settings a little bit more. So I now have it tuned to a 45, which correlates to about a 4666. And that should be just about the sweet spot for a game like uh, One Must Fall. Now this game has its own um, CPU speed adjuster, or speed adjuster, if I uh, just let the fight start. Here we go right here, so I'm about right in the middle, uh, maybe skewing towards the faster side, but I think it's running great like this right here. I haven't played this game in a while. Can't remember the controls. Whoa. It's an older game, so I, I turn the set mold to the slowest possible settings I could get. But to be honest, this game will run fine, um, even just as a 166 Pentium. That it might just be a little bit more stable running it slow. It does feel fast, but I can look at the timer and it seems to be counting down the seconds correctly, so. the controls or if it's normally this janky. I tried slowing the settings down and speeding them up, but it seems to be the same no matter what I do. So there's just one more thing I want to play around with with set mall and you can see I have a 9.4 score which is super slow which is like bottom end 386 so let's see so slow it won't even let me exit out of this program there we go um, so I just I have to try to see what happens when I do this <laughs> well it is loading. It's trying to. Come on, you can do it. A slideshow. Well, it's somewhat playable like this. Still slideshowy. <laughs> right now, getting into the sound portion of this video, and I was debating on doing a dedicated video just on this card, which I still might do, but so this is the the AWE32 and 
It allows you to load custom sound fonts. I spent the last several days, you know, scouring the internet archives and various forums, uh, testing out some sound fonts. I, I found this one, it's an eight megabyte uh, general MIDI enhanced. It says eight megabytes, but it, it takes up around 28 megabytes uh, on my RAM. But I found it's great for games like Doom, Heretic, uh, Descent, Dark Forces, Tyrion, around that 94, 95 range. And I do find it superior to the default AW32 uh, sound and superior to Sound Blaster, of course. But the good thing about this card is I, I have the option to switch back and forth in addition to switching out different sound fonts. Now, a lot of the synths and keys sound kind of the samey with a lot of these sound fonts, but a high quality sound font will have, uh, you'll really hear it in the drums and percussion. Um, so in this one, you know, if you just like, listen for the percussion, it's just really on point, you know. And that really comes through on, on songs like, or on games like uh, on Heretic, but I'm just gonna load up uh, Tyrion here, which the setup file is really cool, or setup program is really cool because you can kind of switch between different sound options in real time. This soundtrack's kind of techno inspired, so. This is my eight meg enhanced sound font right here. Switching it to the default AWE. Uh-oh. I don't know what's going on with my AWE. Okay, so I don't know what happened there in Windows, but I restarted my machine in DOS mode, reinitialized the sound card, and ran Tyrion from within DOS, and the, uh, the AWE seems to be working now. Like, had the wrong notes and instruments. That was weird. Never had that happen before. But anyways, this is the, the AWE sound. It's pretty good. Back to FM. Probably won't let me use my, my sound bank, bank file in DOS. Yeah, I figured it wouldn't. I think I believe it only works in Windows, so you know if you want to switch around. That bug shouldn't be there though. But I'll have to see what happens. So I think that just about wraps up this video. Uh, I was happy to get set mall working. I was able to really slow this machine down, very slow. Um, I was able to still get it to run games like Pod. And I was able to find an option for sound that gives me great versatility and gives me the ability to really experiment with different things that users have created. Uh, something I could search online for, something that might've been created, you know, 25 years ago. And maybe I'm like, you know, the first one to <laughs> rediscover them in a long time. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Take care.